Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Let's Play Star Fox Adventures. I am the Doctor, and in the last episode... I always have to have a pause before then, I seem to never remember what I've done, even though there's a really big spell zone indicator at the top of the screen, which should tell you exactly what I did last episode. Yes, we beat the Geldon at the base of Dark Ice Mines, and got the first fire spell stone, which we now need to return to Volcano Force Point Temple. Which is what we're off to do at the moment. Um, at the very end of the last episode, we gathered some fire weeds to relight the Thorntail's beacons, and they rewarded us with a moon pass key, which we can use down here. Though not here. This isn't a key. This is a Blum's floor. Again, I can't even tell if I've just internalized my own error there, or I'm actually being ironically funny. Hey! You'll notice as well, I always said that I always have the fire blaster on. Oh, I didn't buy a map for this area. Shit. Uh, well, I'll be fine. I normally always have the fire blaster on Y, but now I have it. Well, you'll see later. I'm gonna, this is an episode where we're about to get something where. Which. Oh! oh we're gonna get something else this episode, hopefully, or next episode, maybe, which I can put on Y instead. Um, which I'll alternate between the two, which is kind of cool. Anyway! Explosion! This is another one of those weird one way locks. Um, the air down here is poison, so Fox starts choking, as you can see in the bottom left. And I died! Excellent! That's brilliant. Um, let's just pretend that didn't happen. That was ridiculous. When I died, not only did it pull me back outside, but it also recovered the wall, so I had to get another bomb spore to explode it. Ridiculous. Uh, let's actually try and make this jump this time. This is another bizarre one-way lock. You can only go left here. If you go right, the air current goes down. If you go left, the air current goes up. So for going from Thorntail Hollow to Moon Mountain Pass, you have to go left. And to go from, ooh, a fuel cell, Moon Mountain Pass to Thorntail Hollow, you have to, actually, well, to be honest, because you're coming from then, this direction, it's then left again. Not sure why they have those, again. <laughs> I'm going to mention that every time I see them, because there's another bloody weird one we got coming up this episode. But yeah, this is the, one of the really creepiest areas in the game, known as Moon Mountain Pass. One of the things that makes it really creepy to me is that it doesn't have music. Some of the stuff that happens here is creepy as fuck anyway, but it doesn't have music, it just has creepy alien sounds. Anyway, cutscene! Ooh, flying camera. A hench as fuck, sharp claw. Jesus, he's built like a brick shit house. Ooh, I felt that. Somebody <laughs> coming. Uh I don't think we've really heard sharp claw voices since we got the translator working. They sound so funny. Wake up! Somebody coming! Anyway, you should recognize this music from the last episode. This is the barrel run music, which is surprisingly common in this game. This game loves its barrels. And there are an extraordinarily large amount of barrels here. This seems like a very inefficient way to stop. Like, you could just put up a big gate. Actually, they have to just put up, put up a big gate, so why do they bother with the barrels as well? Fuel cell. I will be doing a comprehensive walkthrough of fuel cells eventually. I'm just gathering the ones I see as I see them. But rest assured, before the ow end of the game, I will be getting every fuel cell. Hooray! That was not too difficult. See, that's an... Not only is it an expensive tactic for repelling intruders, but it's also not very effective. Anyway, this is where we use the moon key that the, sh that the Thorntails gave us at the end of last episode. And we can enter Moon Mountain Pass proper. I think you can get this far before you've done, like, Dark Ice Mines or anything. Don't know why you'd want to, though. But there are some more fuel cells up there. And a couple of Sharp Claw, which we need to kill. So, let's do that. This is our first fight against a Hench Claw as well. See, look at the size of it. Oh my god. Come on. These can do a lot of damage to you, and take. I think you do less damage to them, but they definitely do a lot more to you. I'm gonna full windmill of death on him. Oh, it does still kill. They still okay. They take as much damage, but they do twice as much. Like they can do an entire box worth with one hit. That's like the only reasonable unit I can think of to call it is a fox, because like it's clearly a heart, but it's not a heart. It's trying to look like both a heart and a fox. So that's only gonna have scarabs in, and we've already got four scarabs to heal a bit. I'm looking a bit weak. I'm going to try and go this entire LP without dying, which could be really interesting. Uh, I think I have... How many Bamford Dads do I have, just in case? I do have two Bamford Dads, so I'm fine. But let's hope it doesn't come to that, eh? We'll ignore all this shit for now. Like, that door opens later and stuff like that. Obviously, we come back here later. Oh boy, do we come back here later. But for now, we continue into the... I thought it was going to say Volcano Force Point Temple over my head there. Did I not buy the map for here, either? God, I'm a bit shit, aren't I? There we go. I was waiting for them to be in the right position. There are three things I think, like, this game, graphically, very pretty. There are three things it excels at. Water, lava, and fur. And you will see in this place, the lava and fire and stuff look fantastic. 
Anyway, here we're in a very strange bit. If we try to walk through here, that's the main way into the temple, but that's locked. So what we have to do is jump down this fire trap. Okay, I was going to wait and not be on fire, but okay, I'll just be on fire. Um, walk along this rickety bridge. There's fire keys here. Hey, they're up there. There is... Actually, we're going to go up here. Um, there's a series of locks. So let's staff boost up here. And admire these locks. So there's two fuel cells behind a fire door. There is some kind of pad on the floor, which kills more fuel cells than a Bamfordad. Can't open either of those yet, but we can open this one, because that, all that requires is a staff switch. And that just has another Bamfordad. We're going to have full Bamfordad soon anyway, so it won't matter if... Like... Well, that'd be a measure of whether I have managed to complete the game without dying, though the fact that I've recorded it would be a more clear measure. Anyway, barrel run music again, um, for like 10 seconds, not even that. And now, see, we're at this weird cagey bit that I showed you earlier, but this time we go, we can kind of go through, we go left, and we're into the temple now. To leave the temple, we have to drop down through that one, do the entire thing again in reverse, and come out and the doors have changed. It's a really weird one-way lock, as I say. I knew that one was going to be in this... Like, that's the main one that comes to mind when I think of the weird one-way locks of this temp of this game. But there are a great deal more. It's incredibly bizarre. Anyway, if we curl up here, we will soon enter the temple proper. Here we go. Oh, it's cool looking the okay, fourth point temple is. I'm always a fan of fire temples of any description. Very tricky, there you are. Uh, let's feed him some mushrooms. Hey, we saw it again from that angle. And I'll take you. Uh, this is, yeah, this is just a cool looking place. Is there anything down here? Yeah, there's fuel cells. And energy. I knew those. Well, I thought there was a fuel cell down here. If You see we've got the thing in the bottom left that currently says no map data. That, if you've pressed like, the D-pad left and right, you can cycle through its functions. And this one's currently on as a fuel cell indicator that points towards the nearest fuel cells, if there are any in the area you're in, and flashes when you're closer, the closer you are to them. Uh, which would be kind of useful. But anyway, for now, this is... A spell stone seal. Show the stone to gain the entrance. That's the third thing that thing does. It gives you a information on the local area. But anyway. Awesome. I love that little bit of music. You barely hear it, but just a... You hear like a more... Oh god, this fucker's got a shield as well. This, like, this guy's a henchclaw anyway, which makes him slightly more difficult. Oh, he's taking a lot more of a beating, I think. Yeah. Oh, no. Nope, he's not. I've never called them hench claws before, ever. Is there a fuel... Yeah, this thing's indicating there's a fuel cell down here. I've never called them hench claws before. I just came up with that name off the top of my head now, and now it's stuck. Thank you, Doctor, for coming up with shit like this on the spot. I guess that's why I LP, though. Oh, uh, that thing stopped flashing when we got down here. That worries me. Um, okay. So, there is a there is a fuel cell down here, but we can't get to it yet. That's annoying. Speed up! But yeah, as I briefly mentioned, the, uh, the third function of this is scanning for information that just when you're next to something, it says something like, Magic plant! Grow staff, grows staff energy and stuff like that. That's kind of useful. And it reads signs for you as well. Like this one says, Only he who lights the orbs of the Krizoa may pass. So, what we have to do there is, if we go here, we will see. There are two orbs on the left and right of two different colours, and two flames of colours in front of them. This is a very Zelda feely thing, but basically we have to fire blast through. Is that one green? Oh, it's green. We have to fire blast through the flame of the correct colour. Come on, green. Come on, green. There we go. And then it changes the colour of our fire blast just as it goes through it, and lights the beacon. This one's blue, isn't it? Oh, fuck, I can't see. Shit. Yes, that worked! Oh, I couldn't see where I was aiming at all. So that opens the lock on that door, or like the outer lock, and the inner lock is opened by our spellstone. The only slightly odd thing with these spellstone seals, as you'll have noticed with both of them, they are perfectly spellstone shaped, yet the spellstone never actually fits in them. Like it never goes into them, it just floats in front of them and gets electrocuted. Um, now this is a life force door, but where are the sharp claw? There are the sharp claw! I don't know if they were supposed to load in the delayed or not, but they certainly did. I'm going to try something funny. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> I lied. Let's see if we can flame a couple of them. Go on, Tricky, get him. Yeah! <laughs> it doesn't do much ow damage, but it's funny as fuck, at least to me. Uh, ow. Nope, come on. Oh. oh, these ones with the shield are so bastarding. I like how all the other ones just sit there kind of boogieing while I'm fighting this one. They're just, okay. <laughs> they just kind of go, rah, 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 whip, and waggle their shoulders around. Come on, you bugger. There we go. Uh, as ever I die. 
Oh, that doesn't work for their ducking. Oh god. Okay, I've gone out of combat mode, but who cares? Still working. Yeah, that's definitely a better tactic. And with most enemies, for some reason, it doesn't seem to work with Sharp Claw. But with most enemies, if you kill them using any staff power, instead of re if they were if they would normally reward you with health, like a Dumbledore Dang Pot or a Puck Puck Egg, then they'll reward you with staff energy instead. Right, so what do we have to do in this room? Only he who dims the flames of the Crusoe may pass. Um, so without further ado, let's start a fire. Yeah, dims the flames versus starts fires. I was confused by this for ages cause I was, when I was a kid because I was just like, oh well, it said dims the flames of the Crusoe, so it can't want me to light the fires, so that would make no sense. But yeah, lighting those brings up two platforms up there, and now we can climb up here. And we wouldn't be able to proceed if we hadn't raised those platforms, which is why it confused the hell out of me. Because I was just like, I don't want to light the fires because I'm supposed to dim the fires. These are the flames of the Crusoe, as it's referring to, and they're what need dimming. But you'll be saying, Doctor, we have no method of dimming flames. You're quite right, viewer. Thank you for being so observant. Not a problem. I'm having a dialogue with myself between me and you. That's really weird. <laughs> Can you have a dialogue with yourself? Because dialogue, by definition, means two talking. Uh, hmm. It's getting awful metaphysical in here, so without further ado, I'm just gonna not be where I thought so. Okay, no, I <laughs> ignore me. I thought I was somewhere else. Okay, mushroom. Oh, I should have fed Triggy. Hey, fire! So now we need to. Oh god! No, they jumped off. Jump on the other tricky platform. That was the other one that was raised by the thing. Um, hey, Rumble Stick Cavern. Down we go. And you will notice again, this cavern is wet! Which of course means it's not just an energy upgrade, it's an actual staff upgrade! So without further ado, which I say all the fucking time, zap, 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 You have collected the Ice Blast! Use it to douse flames and freeze bad guys. Assign it to the sea stick and blah 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 blah. Yeah, Ice Blast. Really useful, uh, because it can... Well, I'll show it off now. We put it on Y, because it's more useful in this dungeon than the Fire Blast. So you aim it kind of like the Fire Blast, and then you just hold Y and it goes... And blast to Cold Stream out, which can be used to, oh, dim the flames of the Kruzoa. It's also, if you remember back at the weird one-way lock bit, I said there was one of the locks had a flame in front of it and was guarding two fuel cells. That's how you open that lock, which we'll be doing probably next episode when we finish this dungeon. So, flames of the Kruzoa, there's one. Bye-bye. Here's two! Bye-bye. I'll speed round to the other side. And here is three! And then the fourth one is just over here. I really thought that platform was going to retract the moment I jumped at it. They have a tendency of doing that. Oh, hello, Mr. Elevator! Up it comes! A very angular elevator. That looks like something straight out of Mario 64. Like, kind of got that hazy maze cave kind of look. Right, let's have some Dumbledang pods, please. Oh, that was a Puck Puck Egg. Awesome. And let's feed the trickster. There we go. Lick my balls. He's, he's, his colour scheme I've got him in at the moment blends in really well in this temple. It's really cool. Anyway, down we go. All the way down to the basement. Now here is, oh, we finally, these fire keys things that we've been seeing, we can fight. Cast one hit from the Ice Blast, even a tiny bit and they die, and usually give you more magic than you spent to kill them. Which is useful. Um, die, sir. And they're much easier than killing, like, laughing birds or something, because you don't have to aim at them. A lot of you, like, particularly, you're just one hits. Hi, Fox. I've been studying the ancient records of this planet, and you might be interested to hear this. This temple has been built on a force point. A point where pure magical energy is forced up from within the core of the planet. This energy is so powerful that it continually attempts to break the planet apart. To stop this, the ancient Crusoe placed two spell stones inside the temple to absorb the energy. When General Scales removed the stones, the planet began to fall apart. By returning the spell stones back to the temple, you will bring the planet together once more. Peppy out. So yeah, bit more plot for you there. Um, we've got to bring the spell stones back to stem the force of the Force Point Temple. Can't even get through there yet. <laughs> um, 
This central room looks really cool and reminds me of kind of like classic fire temples, like the fire temple in Ocarina and Dragon Roost Cavern and things like that, because it's just got the kind of height that a fire temple should have. We use the spellstone here. This opens up one of the doors. Ah, that was that door, yeah. I thought it was. I wasn't just being a derp. There's a load of other stuff you can do in this room, but it's all just for one fuel cell, basically. So it's not really worth it. I'll come back later when I'm on a fuel cell hunt or the next time I'm at this temple. Oh, sideways fire jets. Can you, yep, nope, yep, nope, nope, nope. I ducked in real life there, needless to say, did not help. Anyway, back up to the upper levels. There are two ways to access the upper levels, depending on which visit you are to this temple, because as I've kind of hinted to there, you visit twice. There are four spellstones in the game, which we knew already. There are... Huh? Oh yeah, more... <laughs> Sorry, I assumed that door was open. We need to dim more flames like Crusoe in order to pass. Yeah, there are four spellstones in the game. Two fire spellstones, which have to be dropped off at this temple, and two ice... well, water ones, which have to be dropped off at the Ocean Force Point Temple, which we haven't seen yet, nor do we know where it is. Well, I do. You might. Depends if you played this game or not before. Um, but we're not supposed to know where it is yet, is my point. So there are two ways through this temple, and each time you go, a different way will be potentially available to you. Partly because of just... The like the two spellstones are slightly different, so we'll unlock different get away ways. But also, ah, there are power ups you'll have by then, which allow you to access stuff that you won't even have noticed walking past this way because not relevant. So now this door has opened. I like these really cool rolling stone double doors as well. They remind me of the doors in the Forest Temple in Twilight Princess. Uh, oh, hello! Right now we can fight these fuckers with ice. Watch, freeze, and then smash. And then smash. And it's really incredibly easy to kill Sharp Claw using this. Three hits from the Ice Blast, and they die. And that's it. <laughs> um, and you can just crack them, and it's really bloody quick. So, the point where I'm going to be using that for most of this LP because it kills them really quickly. Anyway, quick platforming section here. When the fires die down, jump. You don't even have to wait for the fires to die down if you're metal like me. Oh, yeah, I'm so cool. Unfortunately, Trickster is not so cool as me. No. He's stuck on the other side, but if you look carefully, you will see there are sun pads on these platforms. So what we have to do is use Fire Blaster, and when they're in the right position, stop them! Okay, missed it. Uh, okay, it'll be easier if I just do this one first, and then jump forwards, and then do this one from here. There we go, and now Trickster is happy to cross. He didn't give a fuck about the flames or anything, it was just the moving platforms that were freaking him out. Because we need him over here, we need him to flame this flame grill. Go, sir! Go, sir! There we go. Do, do, do. This has got kind of good... Oh, I need to stop saying... Like, I literally need to stop saying this game's got such good music. Because the whole game has got such good music. Oh god, Laughing Birds. And this is probably the worst place for them to come. Because fucking get away. Because here... If you fall off, you are right banged down to the big room below. Oh god! Okay, I thought I could jump to the teleporter. Apparently I... Get away! Apparently I can't. So... Oh, there's a fuel cell over here. I might as well get it while I'm up here. Because I won't be up here again for a while. And it's right there. It is literally right there. I don't know why I added literally there. Of course it's literally right there. It wouldn't be metaphorically right there, would it? That wouldn't make any sense. I'm going to heal. Oh, bloody laughing birds! How many of them are there in this area? Is this the kind of high chapel of the laughing birds and something that no one told me? It's bullshit. What bad? Oh, we're just going to have enough time this episode to do what I wanted to do. That's awesome. And here we are at the Spellstone Sanctuary, though it doesn't tell you that anywhere. So there are four holes for Spellstones, and we only have one, and we get to see a really cool scene here. Dun 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 dun! Oh, that sounds pretty cool. Right, if you recall earlier, you'll remember a line from Tricky's mother, the reason we had to take Tricky with us, which was, Only a dinosaur of noble birth can breathe life into the Spellstones. During this scene, or during any point between this and the battle with the Galdon, did you see Tricky breathing life into the Spellstone? Because I sure didn't. That's one of my only real problems with this game, that the re that is the sole reason that they say, oh, Tricky should go with you, he'll be good for breathing life into the Spellstones. He never does it once, and that pisses me off a bit. But most people don't even notice it, they just assume at the time, and then by the time it comes down to here, it's so long ago. 
that the, the Queen of Walker said that you kind of forget why she sent Tricky with you in the first place. But that's the reason Tricky is with you, and he doesn't really fulfill that purpose. So we could just throw him off the cliff into the lava here. Be a happier place as well. Um, but yes, so on that note, uh, I'll probably call it a day at that. And we just managed to get the Volcano Force Point Temple done, so that's cool. Oh, loading! There we go. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. I have been the Doctor with the Infamous Gentleman, and this has been Star Fox Adventures. In the next episode, we will be going back to Thorntail Hollow and seeing how to be there, seeing how to get to the second spellstone area. Awesome. Finding the second gatekeeper, that's what we'll be doing, so then we can get to the second spellstone area. Thank you very much, and good day.